Hi guys, welcome to this video where I'm going to give you a quick overview of Rapid Weaver 5, which is a web development tool for Apple Macs. Um, as you can see, I've already got the application open here. Uh, this is the main splash screen that you get when you open the app. And you can see we've got three main options here. Um, we've got create a new Rapid Weaver project uh, for designing a new website. We've got discover more add-ons, which is a link to the online repository uh, for third party add-ons that you can buy uh, and then use. And then you've got Rapid Weaver Tutorials, which is another web link, takes you to Rapid Weaver's website where you can view tutorial videos. Um, the basic videos are open to any uh, subscriber. Uh, for the intermediate and higher level videos, you have to pay for a support subscription. Uh, on the right hand side here, if we already had some projects in process, they would slow show here, but we don't. So let's create a new Rapid Weaver project. So this is the main screen when you start a new project. Uh, you've got your toolbar at the top here. You've got your navigation pane on the left here. And in the middle here is where we're going to be able to see our content and, and edit our content momentarily. Um, we get three options here. On the left, we've got FTP bookmarks, which allows us to keep, if we're, if we're publishing lots of websites uh, to different servers, we can store the details for those servers in here. Then we've got site setup and then we can jump in and add a page so first of all let's click on site setup and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take us through a basic site uh, i'm going to call it matt's blog um, and we're just going to say uh, a cool place to be we're going to add some uh, footer text you can see it's already put a copyright notice in for myself uh, i'm going to put in an email address so that people can contact me. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna host this on my private server at home. Uh, you could put in your, your server address or your URL for your uh, website. And you can see at the bottom here, we've got three little windows, uh, site logo, web clip, and favicon. Now the way that uh, this software works is largely by drag and drop. Uh, what you can do is just drag various things into those boxes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the Tech Made Easy website logo and I'm going to drop it into the site logo there. You can see it's automatically been selected. You can also drop in a web click, uh, clip, which is what will show on uh, iOS devices if the page is bookmarked onto a home screen, uh, the image that you put in there will be shown. And you can also put in a favicon, which is the little 15 by 15 pixel uh, image that you get in your, your web browser. And we're just going to go and click OK there. So that's that done. And now what we can do is we're going to add our first page. So we've got a bunch of different types of pages here. We've got a blog post, we've got contact forms, file sharing. Uh, you can just put your own HTML code in. Uh, you've got iframes, movie albums, offsite pages, photo albums, and lots of other things. And styled text, which is what a lot of us would associate uh, with being just a normal website with some text. You can put some images in there and things like that. Uh, so we'll choose that. And you can see over here, it's come up as a page. It's come up as untitled page. We're going to change that name to a home page. And then basically in this big panel here, you can drop or um, type or edit any type of content that you want. And then when you've finished, you can flip into the preview pane down here and select the theme. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've already got some sample text here. I'm just going to open this document and then I'm going to highlight all of this text. And then I'm going to paste it. into our document. And then what I can also do is I've got a picture here on my desktop that I've taken from Tech Made Easy. I'm just going to drag that straight in. And I'm going to format it for the center of the page. And let's say that's what I'm happy with for my main page. If I click on the preview here, you'll get it. And you see there's a logo there, Matt's blog, cool place to be and home page. And you can see you've got your content there already, which is a really quick way to make websites. But let's say we're not happy with this theme that comes by default. There are a whole bunch of themes included. And you can see just by clicking on one of these, it will automatically re-render uh, the content to show um, appropriately in the, in the new format. And you see that some of these with the logo design and things like that don't work too well, but that's for you to work out. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of themes that are included. You see there's 47 themes included, and there are a whole bunch of ones that you can buy from the add-ons as well. 
Um, so let's just settle on one of these. Let's go for this one. How's that? Look? That doesn't look too bad. Let's have that. So then what we can do is we'll get rid of the themes bar and we'll get a better view there. And you can see over here on the right hand side, we've got a sidebar, which has got nothing in it at the moment. So if we go to the page info button up here and click on the sidebar, what we can then do is we can add information into the sidebar. And this can be uh, just text or it can be HTML. So what I'll do is I'll just type Facebook into the title for that. You can see it's already come up there. And then what I'll do is I'll go down and select HTML. And then if I open this, I've already prepared some text. Drop that in there. You can see it's come up with the correct uh, color coding everything to show that it's it's contextually correct. And one thing to note with this, and it is a little bit of a disappointment, it'll possibly be fixed in uh, a later update. If I was to just put text or image in there, it would show up in the preview. But with HTML, sometimes it doesn't always turn up, which is a bit of a disappointment, but never mind. Um, let's go back to edit mode, because what I want to do is I also want to add an HTML section into here. What I've done is I've taken the embed line from a YouTube video, which you can get from YouTube. Let's just close some of these. And if I paste that in there, at the moment, it's just going to interpret that as text. So if we go to, you just get nothing. It's not correctly interpreting it. If we go back to there, if we highlight the text, and we go to Format, HTML, Code, Ah, again, it's a bug with the software. It is being interpreted as HTML code. It's not displaying appropriately in the preview mirror, possibly because it's from an external source. It can only render things in the in the preview mode uh, that are on the PC you're working on. These are the Facebook bar and the YouTube video are coming from online sources. Therefore, it can't add them. But I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and add another page. And what we'll do is we'll add a photo album. And what this will do is it will then bring up all of the photos or the albums that are in your iPhoto library. So it's linked directly to iPhoto. Let's say uh, we'll call this page Hong Kong Photos. And I'll select the Hong Kong folder from a trip I did. You can see all of these are pre-selected. And then if we go to the preview mode, it takes a little while to render because it has to resize the photos. Once it's done, you'll find that all of your photos are laid out in a nice gallery format. And by clicking any one of them, you then end up in this nice uh, gallery where you can go forward and backward or go back to the home page of the gallery. Uh, and you can also click on, you'll notice that now we've added a second page, it's appeared on the toolbar here. We click on home page, it'll go back to there. Hong Kong Photos goes back to there. So let's say we're happy with our site now. Uh, obviously in a real world, you'd, have, you'd spend a lot more time uh, editing and make sure that everything looks better, looks the best it can. But we'll go up to the publish button here. Uh, it's going to warn you you haven't saved it yet. I'm not going to bother saving. Obviously, you should in real life. Uh, and as I said before, I'm going to add this onto my local server. So I'll put in my credentials. In, in real life, you put in the credentials provided by your web host. Uh, and I know that I'm going to need to put it in a folder called forward slash web. Uh, go ahead and test the connection and it will come back and tell you hopefully that your connection test has been successful, the credentials have been entered correctly. Um, and let's just see if this worked, because when I tried this before, it failed the first time. Uh, but let's just give it a go. Yeah, invalid FTP credentials. It always seems to fail on the first time. It might just be a quirk of my setup here, or it may be a bug. There you go. And you can see, obviously, in real life, that would take a little bit longer. Um, 
my web server is on my home network so it's it's gone really quick obviously in real life you'd be going over the internet to your web provider um, but let's just click ok on that and then what we can do is if we go to uh, a web browser of a choice and in my case i've just got to enter uh, the url of my server and you can see it's hosted uh, it's working and now things from external sources like the facebook button and the youtube video are working correctly which is great news uh, so just prove that go ahead and click that you see that works absolutely fine if we go to hong kong photos you can see all of the photos are there uh, and click on any individual one and you'll be able to browse through them relatively quickly again quick here because i'm browsing on my home network uh, will be a bit slower uh, although this software does optimize your photos for use on the internet so if you've got a two two or three meg photograph it's not going to be two or three megs when it gets to uh, when it gets to your web host so there's a basic overview um, there is a lot more to this software what i've shown you is really just a few minutes uh, of what can be done and not the entirety of what the software is capable of um, there's loads of information on uh, the manufacturer's website or the publisher's website sorry um, i'll put a link in the description below to their website so you can see uh, some of the information that's available if you register with the website you will then be able to view some of the basic instructional videos so you get to see how the software is used in more detail uh, but again uh, to view any of the more in-depth videos you have to pay for a support subscription uh, it's not necessarily a model i agree with i don't like uh, buying a piece of software and then finding out that you only get a basic level of features and a basic few templates and having to shell out more uh, for additional add-ons and things like that but as it stands uh, a relatively good product uh, more than replaces iWeb which of course was canned by Apple a while ago um, and if you're just looking to get into a bit of web design uh, or you want to design a website for yourself or your family uh, or for your business a fantastic way to start um, and I'm sure you'll find it useful thanks for watching guys